Hi, everyone. Welcome to KQ. Mitch Hightower here in the dining room with you. I hope this show finds you doing well wherever you are this afternoon. It's noon here in San Francisco. The temperature outside is 67 degrees, and it's still very, very smoky outside. It smells kind of like an ashtray. <laughs> so we're keeping all the windows closed and staying indoors absolutely as much as possible. Uh, it's um, not the same conditions we saw on Wednesday, where the sky was basically burnt orange all day. And it was like it was so dark, the street lights were on. Uh, th that condition has subsided, but we still have really smoky air from all the wildfires. And so it's a, a constant thing about not being able to go outside because of COVID. And now we can't go outside because the air smells bad and is toxic. So it's raining toxic ash all over everything outdoors. So we're just staying inside. Frack Daddy, hey, great to see you. So nice to have you here today. Thanks for joining us. And the Art of Handmade Dolls and stuff is here. Hello, it's great to see you too. I really enjoyed the Instagram pictures of the lovely puppet that you were showing off last week. That was super cool. And Four Seasons Barbecue, hey, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. I'm seeing us right now, it's just me. Philip is probably gonna pop in later once I have some food to taste. So we'll see about that. Um, today, what we've got going on for you is I'm going to be using our Dash Mini Waffle Iron to make waffle iron panini style sandwiches. And this is a super easy thing to do. And I think it's also really fun. You can use any kind of bread you want. That's what I'm gonna be doing. We're gonna be making these just with sliced bread from the store, something that's you know widely available and super easy to find. And I'm also gonna stuff them with different kinds of cheese. And I have a couple different meats and some pepperoni for a pizza style one. And I think we're gonna probably try some of our Hazel's barbecue sauce on at least one of these paninis that we're going to do today. And we also are going to do a couple of sweet versions if we have time. And I'm going to use this lovely blueberry jam from the Grizzly Bear Canning Company. They sent us this a few weeks ago and I've been excited to try it. So we're going to open this and try this today. And of course, we love Uncle Steve's shake. So we've got some Uncle Steve's shake out here to put on a few of our sandwiches as things move along. Okay, I'm going to check in with the chat every so often while we're doing our demonstration. So let me say hi to people. Todd, oh, Todd from Todd's Tropicals, and Stephen and Jacqueline are here from the Cooking with Stephen and Jacqueline channel. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's great to see all of you. Okay, so we're doing waffle iron panini style sandwiches. And what that is going to involve is we're going to need a couple of slices of bread and you can use almost any kind of bread that you want. And one thing I wanna tell you first off is I'm using the mini dash waffle iron because that's what we have. You can use almost any size waffle iron to do this. It works best in, in a waffle iron with you know standard size plates as far as the waffle pattern. This doesn't really work too well in a Belgian style waffle. So if you have a regular waffle iron, no matter whether it's tiny like this one or if you have a much bigger one, that'll work just fine. And actually, if you have a larger one, you'll be able to do more than one of these at a time. So if you're going to make these for uh, having people over for some sort of function, then you could do it a lot faster if you have a bigger waffle iron. So let's see. Oh, Gary's here from Gary's Dive Cast Collection. Hi, Gary. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. I do my best to make sure I mention everyone at least once when it comes through the chat. So if I miss you, type in another message and highlight KQ. So that way I make sure it stands out with that big yellow uh, type that they give us when we do that. So thank you so much for hanging out with me this afternoon. So let me show you what we're going to do. We're going to start out. We have two slices of bread. And what I want to do is I want to make the bread fit the waffle iron in this case, since we're using the tiny waffle iron. You can use whole slices of bread if you have a big waffle iron or a waffle iron that's square and large enough to accommodate the bread. But what I've been doing is we have this uh, these round cutters. They're good for dough, bread, cookies, all kinds of stuff. So I've determined that this one is the one that I want. And what I'm going to do first is just cut out some circles right out of the bread. So this is very easy to do. Famous last words. Okay, there. Now, what about the bread scraps? 
I'm going to toss the bread scraps in a separate container. And I'm not going to throw these bread scraps away. Philip and I actually like to take these bread scraps and cut them up in smaller pieces and then bake them in the oven with some olive oil and spices. And then we have rustic croutons. So while I am cutting off some of the bread from the different loaves that I'll be using today, the rest of the bread that does not get used for the panini style sandwiches is not going to go to waste. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. There we go. Okay, so I think we're there. So now we used our cutter to create two circles of bread. I already determined ahead of time that this cutter was the one that matched up best to the size of the inside of the dash mini waffle iron. I've been practicing these for the last few days. If you've been following our Instagram, you might have seen some of the other ones that we've made. And oh yeah, these cutters, these cutters are great. I know we use them all the time because there's so many sizes. There's always one that's right for whatever size circle that you need. Okay, so one other thing that let's let's talk about first off the bat is I've been going back and forth with two different techniques for actually building these sandwiches. Usually when we do grilled cheese in a skillet on the stove, I butter one side of one of the pieces of bread and then put that down in the skillet and build the sandwich in the skillet and then put the last piece of bread on. That way you don't wind up having to take a piece of bread that has butter on it and lay it on something and then some of the butter is going to come back off on whatever surface you were working on. So I've tried building the sandwiches right in the waffle iron as well as building them separately and transferring to the waffle iron. Either one seems to work pretty well. What I notice is a little bit of the butter off one side will come off on the cutting board that you're working on, but it wasn't enough to make the sandwich not turn out well. What I did notice is when I built the sandwich in the waffle iron itself, that requires leaving the top up, okay, while you're building the sandwich. And what happened in that case was that the waffle iron, because it was open, cooled down significantly, and it took not a lot longer, but it took a little longer to actually cook or toast the whole sandwich. So that was the big difference. The other thing that I noticed was when I was transferring, you know, using like a spatula like this to transfer the sandwich in here, it was a little cumbersome and I had a difficult time getting it centered perfectly. And so if you don't mind a rustic sandwich, then it doesn't really make any difference. So uh, let's see what else. Okay, I just wanna check in and make sure everyone's doing good. Okay, so now we've got our bread cut out. The next thing we want to do is butter one side of one of the pieces. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. So I'm going to build this first sandwich outside the waffle iron and we'll see how that works out. And then the next one, I'll build it in the waffle iron and we'll see how that turns out. So I'm gonna just slather this one side with butter. And when I say slather, it doesn't need to be a super heavy coating. This is going to help add to our crunch factor and it also will act as grease so the sandwich will not stick to the waffle iron. So now I'm gonna turn this over so we are gonna get a little bit of butter on our cutting board, but that's okay. So we're gonna set that aside for now. The next thing I wanna do is add some condiments. So I think I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do uh, mayo, Dijon mustard. I wanna use this pre-grated Colby Jack cheese. And I'm also going to use some bacon lardon. And bacon lardon is just tiny little pieces of bacon that are super, super crispy. Philip made this for us yesterday to use. So I'm gonna try one of these uh, doing bacon cheese, Dijon, and mayo. So let's get the condiments on here. We're gonna need a clean knife for the mayo. So I'm just gonna spread on a little bit of this, just like you would any other sandwich. You can put as much or as little as you like to suit yourself. I find that I don't really like to overload these because the one hitch in the get along when you're using a waffle iron as opposed to a panini press is the waffle iron comes in from one side where a panini press moves over the top and then you push it down. So what'll happen is the sandwich may get a little flatter at the end closest to where the hinge is than the sandwich part that's out toward the front. And you don't want all the ingredients to come spewing out all over the place. So, okay, we've got some mayo on one side. Let's put some Dijon on the other side. Oh, Scent1-1000 one, 1, is here. Hey, great to see you. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with our live stream this afternoon. We really appreciate it. 
Okay, let's get a little Dijon going on there. Eh, a little bit more. There we go. That should do. Okay, now I'm just going to spread this around, except I'm going to use the mayo knife, not the butter knife. So we're going to spread this around just, you know, like you would any other sandwich. Okay, there. That's pretty good. Okay, so we've got butter on one side, mayo, mustard, and I'll put butter on the other side once I flip the lid on the top of the sandwich. So the next thing I'm going to add is some grated cheese. You can use sliced cheese if you want to. Uh, I find it's a little difficult, more difficult to cut circles out of cheese than it is out of bread. But if you have sliced cheese and you want to cut it into circles to fit your sandwich, that's fine. I don't recommend letting square pieces of cheese hang off the edges if you're using a tiny waffler like this, because then you're just going to have melted cheese all over the place and it's going to make your waffle iron a great big mess. <laughs> so let's add some bacon. Okay, we're just going to pile some lard on. This is super crispy. I can't wait to taste this. I am so hungry. I don't know. I, I cook when I'm hungry all the time because, you know, food's got to get made. Some people I know, they don't like to cook when they're hungry like they don't like to shop when they're hungry because you tend to buy more and eat more. I don't know if that's true for me or not. <laughs> anyway, okay, let's see what else. Okay, thank you for the thumbs up. We really appreciate it. And thanks for hanging out with us this afternoon. So just so you're clear, we're doing uh, waffle iron, mini waffle iron panini style sandwiches. But if you have a big waffle iron, that'll work too. So I've got butter on one side of a piece of bread, mayo on the other. I piled on some grated cheese and some pre-cooked, very crispy bacon lardon. And now I'm going to take the second piece of bread that has the Dijon mustard on it and just put it right on top just like you would any other sandwich. So now we got one step left before we're ready to go into the waffle iron and we need a little more butter on the top of the sandwich. So I'm just gonna spread this around as evenly as I can. The more evenly spread it is, the more evenly golden toasty brown it comes out. So I wanna take a little bit of care with this not to be too sloppy. And don't overdo it because otherwise you'll have liquid butter running all out of your waffle iron. So a nice, light, even coating should be sufficient. Okay, so now we're going to get ready to go into the waffle iron. Okay, this baby's hot. Now you may have seen me use the dash that's spelled D-A-S-H mini waffle iron before about, oh, I'd say five or six months ago, we did a chaffle video. This is an appliance that I bought specifically to make chaffles. And I've also found that it's really handy for a variety of other things. It makes regular small waffles really well. And it, I think it does a great job on these panini style sandwiches. So we'll see how it turns out. So the next thing we need to do is make sure this one works by when the light goes off. That means it's up to temperature. This unit heats up to 350 degrees. So you wanna make sure that you have hot pads or pot holders of some sort because you can touch this very carefully, but the rest of this top of this unit gets very, very hot and you don't wanna to touch it. So let's think about transferring this over. I'm gonna need a spatula to do that. And I think I'm gonna scoot over here just a little bit closer to the waffle iron. Let's open this baby up. Okay, there, we've got steam, so that means we're good and hot. So I'm gonna transfer this over to the waffle iron and do your best to get it as centered as you can. Okay, now I don't know if you can hear it, but it's starting to sizzle already. That's a good sign. Now, one of the things that you wanna know is you don't just wanna go in and just start pressing the waffle iron down. Just gently lower the waffle iron onto the sandwich and then we're just gonna let it relax a little bit. What's going to happen is the heat from the waffle iron is going to soften up the bread and that'll make, us make, make it easier for us to push this lid down as the sandwich cooks. Now my experiments show that this takes about three minutes. So the next thing I'm going to do is use our SmartTro thermometer, uh, digital thermometer, timer, et cetera, and set, it's set for three minutes. So we'll just see what happens. Okay, now the next thing that I'm going to do is as the bread starts to soften, it'll become easier and you wanna press this down very gently, but firmly. Press the top of the waffle iron down. There you go. And you'll hear sizzling as you do it. I'm not sure if this microphone is gonna pick up the sizzling or not. 
So we're just going to press this down as far as you can. And it, when it starts to resist, that's far enough. There we go. Okay. So now this just has to sit in here and cook for a little while. So we've got our timer going. We've got a little more than two minutes left on that. So let me check in with the chat while this is cooking. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. I think I mentioned everyone. I really appreciate everyone being here this afternoon. We love doing live streams. And if you love our live streams, be sure and let us know. You can give us a comment right now in the live chat after the video is over if you want to leave a comment in the lower area. If there's something you're interested in seeing us do on a live stream, be sure and make a suggestion because we would love to hear about it. So now this is definitely sizzling. Press this down a little bit more. There we go. And you can see steam is coming out. One of the ways to tell when things are getting close to finish is the waffle iron will stop steaming. And that means all the moisture or most of the moisture has evaporated. And that's usually a good indicator that you're getting close to done. So just let this keep going. I've been using this mini dash for about six months now, and I really like it. The, if I had to make any criticism about it is that it's a little bit of a pain in the neck to clean because you can't get this unit wet. It's definitely not water resistant or waterproof. And so it's not something that you can wash out in the sink. And the plates inside of it are not removable. So you can't take like the Teflon plates out and clean them underneath the faucet. So what I do is I clean it after it's cooled down. I use Q-tips to get all the grease out of the grooves and then I wipe it down really, really thoroughly with paper towels and that seems to work pretty well. So how much time do we have left? Oh, only a few, 40 seconds left. So I'm gonna push this, it's starting to pop up. So I'm gonna push it down just a tiny bit and I can see right here on the side that our cheese is definitely melting because there's a little tiny bit of it running out on the waffle iron and that's okay. We can clean that up before we make the next one. So we're getting there. Oh, Top Gun FM97 is here. Hey, great to see you, Top Gun. Thanks for coming to hang out with us while we make panini waffle iron sandwiches today. We really appreciate you being here. Okay, I just want to make sure I said hi to everyone. If I, if I didn't mention you specifically, forgive me. I'm doing my best to watch the chat go by as I'm trying to cook at the same time. If you do like, oh, there we go. Okay. Our Smart Tro timer has gone off. So there we go. That's a good sign there. Now let's see if this actually is finished. And I'm gonna start with, pardon me for turning around, I'm gonna start with a clean cutting board because I don't want to cut the finished sandwich on the same board that I have butter and mustard and mayo all over. So let's check this out and see how we did. Ooh, that looks pretty toasty. Let's double check. You know, I think this could get a little tiny bit toastier. So I'm going to leave it in here for a little while longer. And let's reset this for one minute. And let's let this go a little bit longer. Because personally, I kind of like toasty and grilled sandwiches on the very toasty grilled side rather than not. So let's let this go a little while longer. We'll see how it works out. Marcel's here from A Little Fish in the Kitchen channel. It's great to see you. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with us. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. I think I said hi to everyone else. Oh, yes, Todd mentioned about the Nando. Uh, Todd from Todd's Tropicals and I had a discussion about uh, using Nando in the waffle iron, non as N-A-A-N style dough. And I thought that sounded like a cool idea that would likely work. And I definitely want to give it a try. Todd says it went, went well. So that sounds like a good thing. So, oh yeah. And Marcel has the same waffle iron. Well, I hope you like your little mini dash as much as I like this one. I use this often as in, you know, several times a week. Okay. There, another minute down. Let's see. This should be plenty toasty by now. There we go. That looks pretty good. Okay. Now I want to carefully get this out of here and the spatula doesn't really lend itself to that. So I'm just gonna use a fork to pop, pop this baby out. There we go. Okay, now one thing I wanna do is close this back up because the longer you leave this open, the more it cools down and the longer it'll take to cook whatever the next thing you're gonna put in it. So I'm gonna leave this down and closed until we're ready to use it another time. So there you have waffle iron panini style sandwich. Now you, you could serve this 
just like this. As you saw from the thumbnail for this episode, I cut these into quarters and made them more appetizer size pieces. And then I put them on these little jeweled uh, gem picks. We often use these for cocktails. These are also really good for hors d'oeuvres. What I like about these is they're stainless steel and these jewels are just plastic, but these are very durable. They're super easy to wash and I feel better about using them than plastic cocktail skewers or other types of skewers that aren't really friendly and wind up in the landfill or other places they don't belong. So I love these reusable ones and we've gotten lots of compliments about these jewel uh, picks. You can find these on Amazon. I don't usually recommend specific places to buy things, but the only place I've seen these is on Amazon. And just search Jewel Cocktail Picks and you'll find them. They come in several different colors. You can buy a set of all different colors in a rainbow. That's what we have. And they also come in clear. Let me show you a clear one. They also come in clear. And these are super stylish. And like I said, they're good for cocktails, hors d'oeuvres, small sandwiches, whatever you might want to put on a small skewer to make it, you know, party friendly. That's what I think. And plus, you know, these are pretty and they're cool. And also, as you may have noticed, they photograph very nicely. So let's see. Now we've got this ready. I'm going to just use a paring knife and cut it into smaller pieces. So I'm just going to go right down the middle. And then I'm going to repeat that and cut this into quarters. There we go. Okay, so I wanna show you something that's a little more similar to the picture that was in the thumbnail. Now these little bits of cheese that fell off the side, you can just cut them away if you think it looks too messy. I think this looks pretty good. I might trim this up just a tiny bit. I'm usually thinking about food um, and its appearance as well as you know how it tastes because you have to photograph things and you want your photograph food to look as pretty as possible. So the next thing I want to do is put this on skewers like I did in the photo in the thumbnail. So let me show you how that goes. It's just supremely easy. All we're going to do is take these pieces and thread them right on to the skewer. And I like to try to have them facing all in one direction because I think it looks a little neater, but you can do it whatever way you want. So there we go. Oh, let's turn this one over. There we go. That's better. Okay, that's more like, mmm, finger licking good. Okay, um, licking your fingers while you're cooking food is probably supremely unprofessional, but, you know, we're casual. In case you haven't noticed, when we do live streams, no satin shirt, no necktie, no fancy hairstyle. I'm just hanging out and trying to be a little more casual about our presentation. So our live streams are, like I say, we hang loose a little bit in these live streams rather than our super scripted pre-recorded videos. So this will just give you a little bit different spin on what we like to do. So there you have it. Waffle iron panini style sandwich. This one is stuffed with bacon and Colby Jack cheese and has Dijon mustard and mayonnaise if you missed the beginning of the show. So I have one little piece here off to the side and I am hungry, so I wanna taste this baby. So cheers to all of you, I'm gonna give this a taste. Mmm, mmm, oh my gosh, these are so good. Mmm, really, really yummy. The cheese is super melty, the bacon's really nice, this bread is really crispy, really, really nice. And you can taste the butter, it's all buttery and crispy on the outside. That is super, super lovely. Mmm, uh, these are good. Really good, and as you saw, supremely easy to do. So, sorry, I was just checking the chat for a minute. All right, thanks for hanging out with me. We appreciate all of you being here this afternoon. So, I'm gonna eat this last little bite. Mmm, oh my gosh. These are definitely really yummy and they're super easy. Now, if you've been following some of our other videos, you know that I really like to make low carb foods often because that's how I've lost a lot of weight is by following a lower carb food plan. Eating bread is definitely not low carb. So when I indulge in eating bread, which isn't too often, this is how I want to have it. Nice and toasty and crispy and yummy and delicious. So, 
let's think about making another sandwich. Let me check in with the chat and make sure everybody's okay over here. Looks good. Thanks for hanging out with me this afternoon. All right, let's think about trying a different sandwich. And this time we'll use different bread. So I think it's time to get everyone else involved. I have a bunch of different things here to make all different kinds of stuff. So we have pepperoni, we could do a pizza style with some mozzarella cheese, or we could go for a dessert treat and I could use some of this blueberry jam and some cream cheese. So I'm going to let you decide. If you have an opinion about which one you want to see next, let me know if you want the pizza style panini or the blueberry dessert style panini. And then I'll get started on another one as soon as we have an answer about that. Okay, let's see. Now, for doing a dessert style one, we probably want to use... Let's try this. I don't know if sourdough is really the right thing for a dessert one, but it might work for a pizza one. Uh, okay, we have one pizza vote, two pizza votes, one blueberry cream cheese. Okay, so I think probably we're going we're going to wind up doing both. We're going to have to get. I'm not sure if we can cut two circles out of this larger size bread or not. So let's find out. Okay. So. I think what we're going to do is, I'm gonna to have to move this slightly to one side. I, want, I wanted to put it somewhere where you could still see it. Okay, so let's put that aside for now. We'll get back to that. So for now, let's go, let's see, we had two votes for pizza and one vote for cream cheese. So I have to go in a democratic fashion. We're going to use the pizza stuff first. So let's see how many circles can we cut out of this? Will it be one or two? I think we can actually just get one. So I'm going to need two pieces of bread. Now, there's nothing to say that we couldn't cut smaller circles and still do it inside here. They don't have to fill up the whole waffle iron. In fact, if we made small enough ones, you could make little bite-sized ones out of tiny circles. That would be fun. Okay. Welcome back. Thank you. Let's get another piece of sourdough. We're going to need two circles to make this sandwich. So let me get out another piece of sourdough. Let me get this going on. All righty. Great minds think alike. Welcome to the show. Thank you for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. We appreciate you being here today. For those of you who may have joined us a little bit late, I am making mini waffle iron panini style sandwiches today. And while I'm using a mini dash waffle iron, you can use any waffle iron you want, no matter what size it is. It works better with the standard size waffle iron plate. These don't really lend themselves to a Belgian waffle iron. So if you have any size regular waffle iron, this will work. So I'm just using a circle cutter to cut out circles from pieces of bread. And I'm saving the scraps because we're going to take these and cut them up into smaller pieces afterwards. And then we're going to roast them in the oven with some olive oil to make some croutons for salads. So none of this bread that I'm cutting off is going to go to waste. Now we've got two pieces of sourdough bread. And the first thing we want to do is butter one side of one of them. Oh, let's see. Last time we did it, last time... I built it on the thing and I, uh, on the cutting board rather, and I said then I would do it in the waffle iron. That's gonna make it take a little longer, but let's see how that works out. So let's open this up. Mmm, smells good in here. Oh, Philip's here. Hi, honey. Everyone's here. Hey, hi. <laughs> He's peeking in from the side over here. Can I feed you something? Not right now. Okay, gone. we'll come back when you're ready. We'll get Philip to come back a little later to have a tasting. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to butter one side. And then I'm going to transfer this right to the waffle iron. So for the pizza one, I'm not going to put any sauce in it. I'm just going to put cheese and pepperoni. So I'm going to use this mozzarella cheese. I think this pizza one would be good dipped in some marinara sauce. I didn't have any marinara sauce available this morning. I don't know why, because we usually do. Uh, so I don't, I'm not going to be able to demonstrate how to use or how to dip this in marinara sauce. And a piece of errant cheese flew away. So we're just going to have to let that go. Okay, 
Let's get that in there. There we go. Okay, put the cheese aside. Now, for the pepperoni, I got little mini pepperonis that look like this. Just, you know, they're about the size of a 50 cent piece. But these are a little bit big to layer in such a small sandwich. So I cut the pieces in quarters. So we have much tinier pieces of pepperoni. And I want to add this pepperoni. I kind of want to work fast while you're building the sandwich inside the waffle iron if you find you prefer doing it that way. Because the longer you leave the waffle iron open, the more it's going to cool down. And then it'll take longer to cook your sandwich. So that should be about enough. I'm going to put a little more butter on the top piece. Let's move that out of the way. There, I'm going to spread some butter on the top piece. That should do. Okay, that looks good. Now we're going to get this in here and just plop it right on top. Okay. Now, if you weren't here before, I'll explain again what we did. Uh, the first one I built outside the waffle iron and then transferred it. This one I'm building in the waffle iron. Next thing we're going to do is lower the lid. And I'm not going to press it down right away. I'm going to just leave it sitting like this. This will, the heat from the waffle iron will help soften the bread and then it'll be easier to push the top down. Hopefully that will come out with a, that will leave us with a nice crispy finish that's nice and even. Okay, so. Let's push this down. As the bread starts to soften, it'll get easier to push the top down. And you just wanna push it down as far as it'll go comfortably. Now we're gonna to need to set a timer. My experience with the ones when I left the waffle iron open was that it took four minutes for them to cook. So I've set the Smartro timer for four minutes and we'll see how they look after four minutes. Okay, so let's tidy up a little bit so I can show you some other things. Let me check in with the chat. More cheese. <laughs> yeah, more cheese, I know. I always like more cheese. What I found was that if I put too much more cheese on these that the cheese just runs it melts and just runs right out of the waffle iron all over the countertop or whatever surface that you're working on so you'll have to experiment with the waffle iron that you have to see how full you can actually fill your waffle iron panini style sandwiches it depends pretty much on the waffle iron that you have so let's make sure this is getting cooked i want to press this down just a tiny bit more it looks to me like one of the pieces of bread at the top piece shifted a little bit off from the lower piece. So it might not be perfect, but as long as it's cooked, it's going to taste really good. So. Oh, Babe's here and Cooking Cop. Hey, it's great to see you. We love Josh and Babe. And it's so cool to see you. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. We hope all is well where you are. Bethany and Josh live in California, just like Philip and I do. And I'm sure in Southern California, just like Northern California, there's some pretty smoky skies around here and it is crazy outside. So we are staying inside. Okay, I want to press this down just a little bit more because I want to make sure it gets nice and toasty, toasty. Okay. I can hear the sizzling. I don't know if this microphone picks up the sizzling from the waffle iron or not, but it is, you can definitely hear uh, sizzle sounds. And it smells amazing in here. That's one thing we need some of our high-tech friends to invent is smell-o-vision. So you can smell everything that we're cooking. That would be so cool. I don't know how that's ever going to fly, but someone will figure it out sooner or later. Okay, let's hold this baby down. How much time have we got? Oh, we've got two more minutes. So we're just going to keep toasting this baby. Now, you want to be sure, like I mentioned earlier, be sure that you use hot pads with this because... The dash waffle iron heats up to 350 degrees, so it gets hot on the outside. You want to be really super careful so you don't get injured. This is the kind of gizmo that I'm not sure I would want little children using without a lot of training first. It depends on how kitchen savvy your kids are. So let's hold this baby down. Oh, I can smell the cheese. Oh, oh Uncle Steve, shake. Hello. Nice to see you. Hey, Uncle Steve. We've got your Gator Shake on set today. This stuff is awesome. We love all of the Uncle Steve shakes we've tried. We've tried five different varieties. And thank you so much for sending us those generous big bottles full of seasoning. We use this stuff all the time now. 
Gator Shake is actually our favorite on French fries. And not after they're cooked, we sprinkle it on before, and then the seasoning cooks into the fries. And oh my gosh, it is so, so good. So these products, if you haven't tried them already, go to UncleSteveShake.com. And my suggestion is order one of those multi-packs of all five different flavors because they're all delicious the newest one is the sweet and spicy r and it's spicy like the spicy r version that uncle steve has created but it has the addition of uh, some sugar and some honey powder and so the sweet and spicy flavor profile is just super awesome we used it on our last video to put on the cocktail rim of a glass. It tastes good whether you eat it raw out of the jar or you cook it or toast it. So we're super huge fans of Uncle Steve's Shake and we're so glad we discovered these products. I'm not sure how we would do without these now because we use them all the time. Okay, there's our timer. Let's see what's going on with this. Oh my goodness, we boiled out the edge. And this is why I said we don't want to overdo it with the cheese because the cheese just comes running right out. Okay, so that's not nearly as toasty as I want it to be. So I'm gonna close this lid and leave it in here for a little while longer. Like I said, the, that's been my experience is when we build the sandwiches in the waffle iron, the lid stays open for a while, the thing cools down significantly. And so it takes up to twice as long to cook the sandwich. So let's just give it another, let's give it two more minutes and we'll see what, how toasty we are then. So all this mess that's coming out of the waffle iron we're just going to have to do our best to clean that up. You want to be really careful if you're going to mess with this while the uh, waffle iron is hot because it is very hot. So I'm just going to scrape this away. And this is what happens. This leftover cheese, you can save it and eat it. <laughs> okay, there we go. We'll just put this aside. I'm going to leave this here to catch any drips. So... All of these are always an experiment, even the ones that I've done several times. Sometimes the cheese leaks out, sometimes it doesn't. So we'll see if this has any effect on how good it tastes, but it probably won't. So I'm going to press this down just a little bit more. Oh, Josh and Baber in Vegas again. They go to Vegas all the time. I haven't been to Vegas since I was a little kid, back when there was only four casinos on a street that was out in the middle of nowhere. Bushy Beto's here. Hey, great to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. Okay, let's see. We've still got another minute or so to go on this one. This is the pizza one, and it is definitely smelling pizza-like in here. I'm going to just hold this lid down because I want this baby to get nice and toasty. Yes, we definitely need, we need some wind to blow away all the smoke pollution and we need some rain to clean the air. That's for sure. It's very smoky out there. Okay, we're getting close. Let's see how much longer. Oh, no, nope, just a few seconds left. We're almost there. We'll see how it goes. Waiting for stuff to come out of the oven is always fun. Or the waffle iron. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. Now this baby should be done by now. There, that looks much better. Okay, so also this is uh, sourdough bread rather than the wheat bread, so it's not gonna look quite as toasty. Ooh, but it does look very good. Hot, hot, hot. Okay. There we go. Oh, yeah, yay, we made it. Okay, I'm gonna put this lid back down. Whoops, don't slam it like I just did. Uh, alrighty, there we go. There is our pepperoni pizza style waffle iron panini sandwich. So let me put this a little closer so you can get a good look at it. There we go. That looks pretty roasty toasty. Now the ingredients did leak out of one side a little bit and it wasn't perfectly centered in the waffle iron. So, you know, it's not magazine cover worthy, but it's going to taste good. I'm pretty sure. So let's find out. I like to serve these as I showed you earlier by just cutting them into quarters. I think that makes it easier to eat and more appetizer like. You can serve them as whole sandwiches or just cut them in half if you want to. And if you're using a larger waffle iron, you don't have to make just one at a time. You can make as many as will fit in the waffle iron that you have. Okay, let's cut these babies into quarters and then it's going to be time to taste. This is still really hot, so I'm going to have to let this sit a minute before we give it a try. Okay. 
Now, I can tell you that I can feel from touching this bread that the sourdough bread has a crispy factor that is very crispy when you feel it, but it doesn't look as crispy as like this because this was the wheat bread, so you can see the difference. The wheat bread skews darker just because it started out that way. So let's see what the chat room is saying. Rustic looking meals are better. <laughs> I agree, actually. I think rustic looking food is usually, you know, very super delicious. And it does not have to look like it just came off of a magazine cover in order to be good and to want to eat it. So, but, you know, you eat with your eyes first. And especially on Instagram, the competition is stiff for pretty food pictures. So, we try to make everything look as beautiful as we can. So let's see, are these too hot to try? Let's give this a try. Hopefully this isn't too hot. Okay, so this is the pepperoni pizza style waffle iron panini sandwich. And this just has tiny slices of pepperoni and mozzarella cheese inside. Mmm, oh my God. This is good. Really, really yummy. And it tastes like pizza. I think the only thing that could make this better is if we had some marinara sauce to dip it in. And we didn't have any marinara sauce in the house today for some reason. I'm not sure why. But I think dipping these in marinara sauce would really give that whole pizza vibe going on. This definitely tastes pizza-like, but without any sauce. Of course, you could also go in a different direction. We like using barbecue sauce. We used Hazel's barbecue sauce on a pizza a couple of weeks ago in one of our videos. This stuff tastes really, really good as a pizza sauce. You could also use ranch dressing, you know, whatever you've got or whatever you like. We also use bang bang sauce. We made that recipe a couple of years ago. That bang bang sauce is super delicious. It also makes a really nice pizza. So, oh, tomato soup. Yeah, this would go, these would go super great with the bowl of soup and or a salad so you can have a whole meal. This makes a great lunch. I think it would also be a nice light dinner. Uh, of course, the you know bacon and cheese ones, a uh, few people suggested on our Instagram that they thought that would be great for breakfast. I mean, I'd eat these any time of day personally, but yes, definitely bacon and cheese for breakfast is a good thing. Garlic bechamel, oh yes, garlic bechamel. That would be so good. If only we had some. Tom's Food Factory is here. Hi, Tom. Great to see you. Thank you for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. It's great to see you. Thank you all for joining us. Okay, so I want to have another bite of this pizza one. Mmm. These are good. Really, really good. And as you've seen, it is supremely easy to make happen. Mmm. Mmm. These are so yummy. I'm running out of paper towels. Okay. So, we've done bacon and cheese. We've done cheese and pepperoni pizza style. Now it's time to do a dessert one. And I believe the request earlier was for blueberry and cream cheese. And we have that, cream cheese. And blueberry jam. Now let me tell you about this blueberry jam. This blueberry jam is from the Grizzly Bear Canning Company. They're based in Florida. And they sent us a lovely box full of different kinds of homemade jams and fruit butters. And these products are awesome. These are made from recipes that, if I recall correctly, they're over 100 years old. They're secret family recipes. And the owner of Grizzly Bear Candy Company is still making these the same way that his mom and grandmother did years and years and years ago. And this stuff is excellent. So let's get this open. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. Look how pretty the color is on this. This is just lovely. This is blueberry jam. And like I said, this is from the Grizzly Bear Canning Company. You can find a link. I'll put a link for them below in the description below this video. Okay, so next thing we want to do, oh, before we start getting the spreads ready, because we're going to need some more bread. So what are we going to do for more bread? Uh, I think I like the way the wheat bread was working out. So let's get a couple more slices of wheat bread and check this out. Okay. Now we're gonna use cream cheese and jam to make this one more of a dessert sandwich. You could definitely do peanut butter and jelly as well. That would be supremely yummy. I actually have some peanut butter. If we don't run out of time before the show's over, 
Uh, or maybe we can run a little long. We'll see how it goes. Let me check in with the chat. Okay, everyone's still playing nicely. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. So we've got two more pieces of wheat bread. This is a very light wheat bread. You can use almost any kind of bread you want. And I'm gonna use the circle cutter and I'm just cutting these to fit inside the mini dash. If you're using another uh, regular size waffle iron, you don't have to cut the bread down if you don't want to, unless you wanna make the sandwiches circles on purpose. And we're saving all of these scraps I'm going to cut these scraps down later and roast them in the oven with some olive oil and spices, probably some Uncle Steve's shake. And then we'll have croutons for salad for the rest of the week. Okay, let's cut out the other one. Okay, there we go. Now, if your bread pieces are slightly undersized, that's okay. These are meant to be fun and a little on the rustic side. I'd probably be more uptight about getting them perfect if I was serving them at a party where it was a little fancier. But for casual, for today, we're doing good right here. So this time I'm going to uh, build the sandwich on the cutting board and then transfer it into the waffle iron like I did the first time. Now I'll, I'll try go back and forth between building it in here and building it here. It's really up to you what you feel more comfortable with. It Like I showed you, it takes a little longer to toast properly when you build the sandwich in the waffle iron versus building it and then transferring it to the waffle iron. But either way works. You can just decide what you think works best for you in your kitchen. So let's get some more butter on here. If you missed before, what we do is we're gonna spread a nice even, but not too heavy coating of butter on the bread. And I'm gonna do one side first. And we're gonna flip this over carefully. And I'm not gonna press it down because I don't want all the butter to come off on the cutting board. So there we've got that. Now what we need is we need some cream cheese. I'm gonna start with a clean knife. So this cream cheese sat out for a little while, so it's already soft, which definitely makes it a lot easier to spread. So I'm just gonna spread a little cream cheese on here and we'll see how this works out. Okay, you just need a nice even layer. I've noticed, and as you may have noticed if you've been watching uh, for the last few minutes, that if you overstuff these, they don't fit in the mini dash very well, and some of the ingredients may leak out. So in order to prevent that from happening, don't overfill them for the size of waffle iron that you're using. So that'll just take some experimentation. Okay, so now it's time for some of this lovely blueberry jam from Grizzly Bear Canning Company. This looks so good, really rich and delicious. Okay, let's put just a spoonful of that on there. I think we're gonna need a little tiny bit more. Let's get this on here. And let's spread this around. How's it going? I'm making one. Philip has just joined us. He's over here in the kitchen. I'm making blueberry jam with cream cheese. Oh, I use my fingers again. Every time I use my fingers in a video, I always cut it out. So when you're watching the live stream and you see me do that, you know, don't try that at home. <laughs> okay, so we've got this lovely blueberry jam that's from the Grizzly Bear Canning Company. Thank you, Grizzly Bear Canning Company. Okay, Philip's gonna join us, so let me scooch over. Okay, this is supremely hot, so just be yeah. really careful. Can you get in? Yep. <clears throat> okay, ladies and gentlemen, my partner Philip has joined us. Thank you so much for coming in and joining us. Mm -hmm. It smells so good, I want some. Okay, well here, these are, this is bacon and cheese. Ooh. Okay, so you can try that. This is the um, pepperoni and mozzarella. Mm. So you can try that here. Oh. Put, you want to put those on your plate, and then I'll just get this out of the way. There we go. Okay. So I've got like 5,000 cutting boards going on here. Tell me what you think. Mmm. Oh, that's tasty. Yeah. Nice and crunchy on the outside. Mmm. Really gooey on the inside with the cheese. And of course, bacon. Thank you for making that lovely bacon lardon. Mm. Philip made the lardon yesterday, so we knew we were going to use it today. Mm. So let me check in with the chat and make sure I've said hi to everyone. Looks like we're good. Okay, thanks everyone for being here. Okay, so back to the cream cheese and blueberry jam. I've got butter on the underside of the bread, cream cheese jam. We're gonna flip this over on the top like that. And then I'm going to butter the top. 
And you don't need lots and lots of butter, just a nice even coating. And this will not only add lovely buttery toasty flavor to the panini, but it will also prevent it from sticking to the waffle iron. Helps make it crispy too. It does help crisp it up a lot. Okay, so here, I'm gonna do this so I don't stick my fingers in that by accident. Okay, now earlier I showed both how to make it outside the, the waffler and then transfer it as well as build it inside. And as we discovered when we were working on it, when you build in the waffle iron, it takes significantly longer for them to toast yeah. because the waffle iron cools down a lot. Yeah. So I'm going to open this. So I'm going to ask Good you to work. be really careful because it's very hot and the steam's going to come up. So now we're going to very, very carefully transfer this to the waffler. Mm -hmm. You can hear that sizzling sound fits. start. It just fits. Well, we used our <laughs> circle cutter to get the bread exactly the size that we wanted. And now, once again, if you missed earlier, we're going to lower the lid carefully and then we're just going to leave it sit for just a teeny bit what will happen is the heat will help the bread soften up and then it'll be easier to press the lid down further as we go along now i'm going to set this for one two three minutes and we'll see how far along we are at the three minute mark usually somewhere between three and four minutes is what it's going to take if you build the sandwich outside the waffler and then transfer it to the waffle iron. Now, of course, that's using this mini dash that heats up to 350 degrees. If you have a different waffle iron, you may have to adjust the time depending on how hot your waffle iron actually gets. Now I'm just going to press down. And you see this one wasn't very full because we just had cream cheese and uh, blueberry jam. So this will press almost all the way closed. There we go. You just want to press down until it's really resistant and then let go. Just be sure you don't touch this because it's supremely hot. You can feel how hot it is, right? Yeah, it's this this little baby gets nice and hot and it works really well. We used this uh, in a chaffle video about six months ago and that was, uh, we had only been experimenting with it for a short time. We've had lots of time to use this in the kitchen now and it really works great. Um, like I mentioned earlier, the only thing I wasn't super crazy about is cleaning it because it can't be washed. So I just use Q-tips to clean out the crevices and then wipe it off really good with paper towels. And that seems to do the job okay. So, oh, Marcel says hi. Hey, Marcel. Uh, so does Cooking with Stephen and Jacqueline. Hey, Stephen and Jacqueline. Okay, yeah, I think I've made sure I said hi to everyone. If I missed you, send me a message in the chat and I'll be sure and give your channel a shout out. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. So today we're making waffle iron panini style sandwiches and as you can see, they're really yummy. Mm -hmm. And they're fun. And the one in the waffler right now has got cream cheese and this lovely homemade blueberry jam from Grizzly Bear Canning Company. Mm -hmm. I'm going to mention Grizzly Bear Canning Company as many times as I can. <laughs> they make really super great products with uh, authentic vintage homemade recipes. So I'm looking forward to tasting this dessert version. Let's see how much time have we got left to go. Uh, about a minute. Let's make sure this is getting nice and toasty, toasty. You hear it sizzling. Yep, you can hear the sizzling. Okay, it's still going. It's still cooking. Okay, so we already made bacon and cheese, and we made pepperoni and mozzarella for a pizza-style one. I think the pizza-style ones would be great dipped in marinara. That's, I think that's the only thing it takes to really send it over the edge to be a really cool appetizer. Or you can actually spread it on the bread inside. Well, I thought of that, but I'm concerned that it too much of it would leak out because what you missed earlier was I was conservative with the amount of cheese I put in it. And some of our viewers said, more cheese, more cheese. Well, I didn't. I put just a smaller amount and the cheese started running out the front, oh. even though I thought I was being conservative with mm -hmm. the cheese. Um, we did try. Oh, there's a timer. Okay, let's have a look at this. We did try the, I did try the Hazel's barbecue sauce on the interior of it. And that works really well because it's soaked into the bread. Ooh, look at the blueberry coming through. That looks good. I think it needs to be a little toastier. Yeah. Okay. We're going to close this lid and we're going to give this another minute. We're using our SmartTro ST54 digital thermometer and timer. This little unit works really well. It's in the $25 price range. You can find them on Amazon. Uh, we did a review on this. If you want to check it out, it was two or three videos ago. And there's a link in the description for that video where you can get a coupon for a better price than that. 
We don't make any money off of this. I'm only showing this off because we actually use it and we actually really like it. So you won't see anything on our show that we don't personally use or like, especially if we're giving you a brand name and recommending something. It's because we've used it a lot and we're confident you'll like it as much as we do. So Suburban Barbecue's here. Great. So glad you could make it. Thank you for coming to join us. We hope everything is well where you are. If you've missed the beginning of the show, we're making mini waffle iron panini style sandwiches. And if you don't have a mini waffle iron, no worries. You can use a standard size waffle iron. There's our other minute. Let's see how we did. Okay, let's see if we're crispy enough okay. yet. Better? More? A more crispy? I think the jam is what's giving us the soft. Yeah, well, that's okay. So it looks okay, huh? I bet it's fish in the bottom. Okay, let's see. Let's pull this baby out. I'm just going to use the fork. Try to pull this baby out. There we go. Okay. Now, I want to close this carefully. Remember, I slammed it before. It's not, I don't want to slam this because I don't want anything in it to come splashing out on us because this baby gets hot. Okay, so here we have the blueberry cream cheese waffle iron panini style sandwich. And as you can see, some of the blueberry jam heated and came through the bread. That's fine as far as I'm concerned. What it does is tells us what we have to look forward to. So I'll cut this up in quarters <clears throat> and we'll see how we did. Sounds crunchy. It does. It may have to sit here for a minute. And it's very, very warm. Oh, the timer went off again. Okay. Let's slice this baby up. This may need to cool down a little bit because jam tends to get really hot because of all the sugar content. So, but that looks really good. I don't know. I think mm -hmm. that looks super yummy. Oops. Oh, blueberry jam's flying around. Is that on the wheat bread? This is on the wheat bread. Yeah. I wasn't, I didn't think the sweets would go with the rye or the sourdough. So that's why I use the wheat bread. So, okay, there we have it. Blueberry and cream cheese, waffle iron, panini style sandwiches. These are little, I like cutting them into mini appetizer sizes myself. So, do you want to give these a taste? Hello. Are you ready to go? Okay, <laughs> cheers. We're going to taste these little babies. Mm, that's good. Mm. Oh, yeah, they're hot. A little hot. Too hot for you? No. Mm, these are good. Mm. This blueberry jam tastes really good. Okay. Thanks, Grizzly Bear Candy Company. This mm. blueberry jam is great. Mm. Mm. You know what these are reminding me of? Kind of like an elevated Pop Tart. Uh huh. Yeah, that very much. These are very breakfasty. I thought it would be more desserty, but this is really kind of breakfasty too. You can make it more desserty if you have, like sugar, powdered sugar on top. Well, I actually <laughs> have powdered sugar <laughs> right here. We have a sieve? We do. Pardon me for reaching across the table. Okay, so if we were serving these as a plated dessert or a plated breakfast, I think they would also be good with a little syrup. Some maple syrup might be nice. Are maples too well, much for the blueberry? I don't they're know. They're already pretty sweet with the jam. They are pretty sweet with the jam. Of course, the powdered sugar is going to make it sweeter, too. <laughs> so. okay. But it's, you know, it just looks chef -y. It does look chef-y. So I'm going to just... Put a tiny bit of this in here. There, that's about all it's gonna take because we've got a small plate. Mm. Mm. Okay, let's put this back in here. Okay, we'll set that aside mm. where it won't get messy. Okay, so there you have it. We've got a little sprinkle of powdered sugar. You could put cinnamon on top of that. Mm -hmm. It would probably be really nice as well. We actually, I actually got out the cinnamon, but I haven't used it yet. So. There you have it. Plated dessert, mini waffle iron, panini style sandwich, cut into cute little bite-sized pieces. Oh, sent one says that we should have some ice cream with it. I, I totally agree. Nice little scoop of ice cream on the side, and then you could put some more of the blueberry jam drizzled mm -hmm. over the ice cream. That would be a lovely plated dessert yeah. and supremely easy to create. So thank you so much for that suggestion. That's a great idea. So, yum. Oh, okay. So, we've made bacon and cheese, pepperoni and cheese pizza style, and we've done a dessert style with blueberry jam and cream cheese. 
we have a few more ingredients. Do we want to try anything else? <coughs> I know what we can do. Peanut, 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 peanut butter. butter. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try peanut butter. Do you want to try the peanut butter with blueberry or do you want to try the raspberry? Uh, well, we did blueberry already. So. We did blueberry, so let's do raspberry. Okay, I want to finish eating this. Oh, no, no, fine. Let's put it right there. That's good. Mmm. Actually, to answer your question, Bushy, Philip makes ice cream for us all the time. We have a attachment for our KitchenAid stand mixer that makes... You keep it in the freezer. You keep it in the freezer. When, you're, when you need to use it, you pull it out. And you put them in, in the mixer, and you pour your ice cream base in, and it churns. Um, in about 10 to 20 minutes, you've got ice cream. It's great. It's really great. It comes out super smooth consistency. I just love it. We kind of have a rule that we don't eat cookies, cake, or ice cream unless we make it ourselves. So that way, we don't bring home a lot of junk food from the store. But we make a lot of cookies. But we cake make a lot of, yeah. <laughs> This guy bakes all the time. I love to bake. Okay, so let's try it one more. We're um, already at our hour time frame, but I vote for let's go longer. How many How many people want to see another sandwich? Another sandwich. If you want to see another sandwich, let us know, because I think we're going to do it. I think we're going to go for it. Okay, let me get a fresh cutting board. This is why I had so many cutting boards out, because <laughs> I have to get a clean one every time I do something. What kind of bread would you like to see this on? Hmm. We have dill rye, the wheat, and the sour. Well, the wheat. The wheat. Okay, yeah, let's do more wheat. The I don't think the dill rye would go well. I think the dill rye is definitely for something much more savory. Yeah, it would be better with some bacon and cheese. Actually, now I have to go further into the loaf because the pieces at the one end of the loaf are a little smaller than the others. You want to make sure that your pieces of bread fit your circle cutter. Now, if you're using a larger waffle iron, you don't need to cut the bread into circles unless you want to. We're doing that so it fits in the mini dash waffle iron as perfectly as it can. And they look so cute. They do look cute. Okay, so let's... Oh, do you need a napkin? I'll get one here. Okay. I took quite 20 years. That's fine. Okay, let's cut these. For those of you who weren't here earlier... What savory sandwiches have they made? Oh, well, we made... Bacon and cheese. We made pepperoni and mozzarella, which is on a, sourdough. Yeah, which is a pizza style. This is really good. And then our sweet one, uh, so far, our sweet one was the blueberry jam from Grizzly Bear Candy Company mixed with cream cheese. And then we dusted it with powdered sugar for a finish. So the next one we're going to do, we're just going to do peanut butter and red raspberry preserves. So, first, what we have to do is use the circle cutter to cut the bread. See how good that works? Mm -hmm. Okay. And Philip's going to take these bread scraps and we're going to cut them up and make rustic croutons. Yeah. So this bread that you see uh, being cut away is not going in the recycling bin. We are going to eat this. Panzanella! Okay, so let's cut the other one out. We need two circles. Just get that going on. Oh, Bushy wants to do chocolate. I actually have chocolate uh, right here. We could do chocolate. Well, you know, you can put, make... Can One we, side, jam, peanut butter, and put a few chips in the middle. Okay, so we'll do peanut butter and jam plus a few chocolate chips. Yeah! Okay, let's do that. Let's do that. Okay, good idea. I'm glad. Thank you, Bushy, for reminding us that we have chocolate to try. Okay, so what I'm going to do first, I personally like, I think I like building them outside and transferring yeah. them better than building it in. I, that's just me. You can do it whichever way you think works best for you. But I think do I think making the sandwich first and then transferring it to the waffler is easier. Okay, so we've got the butter knife here. I wanna butter one side of this very lightly, but evenly. You don't need to slather it on because all that will happen is a lot of butter will just run out of the waffle iron. So we need enough to help get the bread nice and toasty and taste buttery and also act as an agent so the sandwich won't stick to the waffle iron. Okay, now we're gonna need a clean knife for the peanut butter. Now this is um, all 
old fashioned style smooth peanut butter. It's the kind that comes in. There's a big layer of oil on the top and you have to stir the living daylights out of it to get it blended up. But it tastes really good and it doesn't have a lot of ingredients that it's just peanuts. It's just peanuts. And a little bit of salt. Yeah. So if no you want oil added, no sugar added, no preservatives, no nothing funky going on there. So this is really good. And also peanut butter is supremely nutritious. It has lots of protein. And without any sugar in it, we don't have to worry about eating it. Okay, so there we've got some peanut butter going on. Pardon me for reaching in front of you. Let's get some of this raspberry jam going on. I think I'm going to use a spoon for this. I probably should have stirred this up because this is a brand new jar. So, Okay, mm. let's put a little bit of this raspberry jam on here. I think we're gonna need a little bit more. Okay, let's put some more of this jam. Okay, so there we go. This doesn't spread quite the same as that lovely blueberry jam did, but that's all right. Do your best. We'll just spread it around as best we can. Okay, there we go. Now we've got some raspberry jam going on. Would you like to sprinkle us a few chocolate chips on there? We've got mini chocolate chips because I thought they would fit in the waffle iron better. So put on however many you think is best. Oops. Chocolate chip down. Oh, chocolate chip down. Oh, well, we'll okay. clean up later. Okay. Is that enough, do you think? Well, a couple of more. Yeah. Come on. Chocolate. It's chocolate. Can't go wrong. <laughs> okay. okay, let me show everyone a, a closer up how we did this. Okay, so now we've got the two circle pieces of bread peanut butter on one, jam on the other, and a few chocolate chips sprinkled in. So now mm. uh, the only issue is that this is the side that doesn't have butter. We'll put it so, that way and then, and then I'll flip it yeah. back over. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll have to do this and then we'll have to do that. There we go. Okay, now because we need butter on the top piece of bread. So I'm just gonna try to get this as evenly spread out as possible. And this butter, we left sitting out at room temperature for quite a while ahead of time, so it's nice and soft and spreads really, really, really easily because you don't want to be using things that are uh, trying to spread butter or cream cheese that's too stiff and rigid because all you're going to do is tear the bread up and then the sandwiches aren't going to look very pretty. So we've got butter on both sides, peanut butter, raspberry jam, actually it's preserves, and chocolate chips. So let's see how this works out. Yeah. We're ready to go. Okay, let's transfer this baby to the waffle iron. Okay, right in the middle. I like to try to get it as centered as possible. And then we're going to gently close the lid. Now, if you missed the previous demos, I'm leaving the lid on here just casually set down on top because what will happen is the heat from the waffle iron will warm up the bread and the bread will become soft so then we can press it down a lot easier. It steams a little bit. It's, yeah, just enough to get the bread softened. Okay, so let's reset this. I'm gonna go for four minutes. This is our Smart Tro timer. We've been getting a lot of use out of that little baby. Okay, so now it's time once the bread starts to soften, it becomes really press. easy to press down. And since this is wasn't stuffed very full, you can press it really, really far down. So you want to press just until it becomes like really resistant, and then that's far enough. And the lid should stay on there. If you see the lid raising back up, then just put the hot pad on top and press down some more. There we go. Okay, so we've just got to wait. Mm -hmm. It's cooking. Make sure this is getting nice and there we go. You can hear that. When you press the lid down, you can hear a sizzle. That means you're doing good. Okay, super yummy. Okay, so the one that's in here right now has peanut butter, raspberry preserves, and chocolate chips. Hello. I don't know what's not to like about that. Okay, so I'm going to need a different plate to plate that on. I'm going to need to clean up this cutting board so I can cut it on here. So we're running out of cutting boards, so I'm going to wipe this one off so it's nice and clean for our next 
panini. Well, I see these are yummy because they're all gone. This is lunch. So. Sure, yeah, hello. I'm <laughs> we can make more. Let me check in with the chat room. Oh, Reese's peanut butter. Well, actually, I like Reese's peanut butter cups. How about you? Oh, God, yes. Yeah, I like Reese's <laughs> peanut butter cups. I always like peanut butter and chocolate. In fact, lately, I started putting peanut butter in my smoothies. Uh, our friend Aliena from Aliena's Kitchen puts peanut butter in a lot of her smoothie recipes, and I've tried it, and I think it's great. There we go. And you made that great peanut butter sauce. Yes, we've been experimenting with peanut butter dressing. If you've seen our Instagram in the last week or so, you might have seen a picture of it. I'm still trying to get it right where it's, you know, peanutty enough without being either too watery or so thick that it's not a sauce. You have to spread it. It's either too peanutty or I can't taste the peanuts at all. So we're still working on our formula for that. And as soon as we figure it out, we'll let you know exactly what the recipe is. Okay. We're still cooking here. Got How much longer? 30 seconds left. These are fun because you can do a lot with them. I mean, we just got a few ingredients. These were all things we already had on hand in the refrigerator or in the pantry. So we didn't have to go to the store specifically for anything, I don't think. Anyway, these are, as you've seen, these are super easy to do and they're super fun. And if you have a big waffle iron, you can do more than one at yeah, a time. <laughs> we saw her. Waiting for one to happen. Yeah, we had, well, we saw another friend of ours do something similar, and she used a big waffle iron and made like four at a time. So if you're feeding a crowd, a big waffle iron would probably expedite this process. So oh, yeah. let's see if four minutes was long enough. Ooh. You think we're ready yet? A little longer? Oops. Careful. Um, think we're good? Yeah. 30 seconds okay, more? Go, go, go. Okay, we're just going to go a tiny, tiny, tiny bit longer. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, we're going to give it 30 more seconds, and then we're going to pop this baby out and see how we did. Lots of people have been asking about the uh, gem or jewel mm -hmm. picks. Uh, if you didn't hear my explanation earlier, these are very easy to find on Amazon. They're just called jewel or gem cocktail picks. We usually use these for, you know, lemon wedges and maraschino yeah, cherries uh, in our cocktails but these also work really well as short skewers for appetizers oh 30 seconds up already time flies when you're having fun okay let's see how this baby looks okay we're ready Ooh, there we go okay this looks pretty good let's transfer this off onto a cutting board whoops oh flipped oh well now you can see what the bottom looks like the bottom comes out nice and toasty just like the top. Oh, I've got this out of picture. There we go. Now you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. So let's close this baby really carefully. Okay. And this is ready. Oh, it smells good. Really good. Mm -hmm. And look, it, this one is, I got it centered in the waffle iron perfectly. And so it's actually really nice. This, this would be photo worthy if we were doing a photo shoot right now. So let's cut this into quarters. Oh, I can see yumminess already. Mm -hmm. Oops, that doesn't usually happen. Okay, we're going to cut this baby into quarters. There we go. Okay, now that's, it's pretty warm. Yeah. We might want to wait a minute before we eat it. Hmm, let me get a plate. We have one plate left. So let's plate this baby up. I'm just going to transfer these with my fingers right off onto the plate. There we go. Looks good. Okay, so there we have raspberry preserves, peanut butter, and chocolate chips. Oh, yes. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Okay, we're going to let this cool down just a tiny bit because the jam with all the sugar and the chocolate is going to be a little on the hot side. So we're going to taste this just in a minute. Let me check in with the chat. Instagram that puppy. Exactly. We will. <laughs> let's take a picture of this one too. Okay. Let's get another picture going on here. This is pretty good.
Yummy. Lovely. Okay. Oh, shall we try this? God, yes. Okay. It's probably going to be hot, so just go easy. Okay. Cheers. Okay. Let's give these a try. Mmm. 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 Oh my God. That is so good. <laughs> this is really good. Oh my. Mmm. Mm. The peanut butter with the raspberry and the chocolate uh -huh. together. This is really delicious. Oh my gosh. This is so good. Mmm. Mm. Um, everything's nice and warm and all melty, melty together. These flavors are playing very nicely mm -hmm. with each other. And the bread is supremely crunchy. Nice and crispy. We don't eat bread nearly as often as we once did. But when we do, this is the way to go, people. Mm. This is so yummy. Mmm. Mm. Mm. This is super delicious. These are good. These are really fun. Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh. Okay, let me have a support. Let me check in with the chat. Chocolate goes great, but it depends on... Oh, yes, absolutely. All these flavors depend on your personal taste. So we're showing you things that we thought we would like and we hope you would like. But we'd encourage you to, if you want to give this a try, whether you have a small waffle iron or a big one, use whatever fillings you like and experiment. And then if you find something fabulous, let us know what it is so we can try it too. Okay. Oh my gosh. I need one more little bite. Mm. Mm. So this is so good. Yeah. The raspberry, peanut butter, and chocolate is an excellent combination of flavors. Mm. That tastes super good. Mm. Super, super good. And um, thanks to our smart troll for keeping track of our time today. That worked out really well. Yummo. Well, I didn't wind up using the Hazel's barbecue sauce in any of the ones we did today, but we have used this. This works really well in one of these. If you have cheese and any kind of lunch meat or bacon, adding this to the interior of the sandwich works really well. And this also works really well as a dipping sauce. So either way, give this Hazel's a try. You can get this at hazelsbarbecuesauces.com. And we did a review on these a couple weeks ago. So you can check out that review if you like. And there's also a link to Hazel's website. So you can order these. They'll deliver them right to your door. We made pizza with it. Yes, we did. It was we, really yummy. It was really yummy. We used the barbecue sauce in place of marinara or an other type of sauce, and it was really supremely delicious. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, Hazel's comes in hot and mild, so we like both. If you're not a fan of things that are hot, the mild will suit you just fine. It's nice and sweet and smoky. And this is also sweet and smoky, but it's got a little kick to it, and I really like that. So... Okay, uh, let's see. I think we said hi to everyone, and we've... Uh, oh, Suzanne's here. Suzanne, it's so nice to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out with us. I'm sorry she wasn't here earlier to see this. We'll have to show you how to make these on the replay. Uh, Suzanne, if you haven't checked out our channel, decorates the most amazing, gorgeous cakes. And what's really cool about it is she shows you every detail how to make it happen, so you can do it too. So be sure and check out the Suzanne Collenberg Cake channel if you're not already familiar with her. You need to be. She bakes beautiful things. Thank you, Suzanne, for coming to check us out. We really appreciate it. Okay, so what we did today was we used our mini dash waffle iron to create panini-style sandwiches with regular sliced bread out of a bag from the grocery store, which is super easy. We just buttered both sides of the bread so that it will create a toasty, buttery exterior as well as not stick to the waffle iron. And then we filled them with a variety of different things, including savory and sweet ingredients. The first one we did had bacon and cheese on the interior. That was lovely. We did a pizza style that had pepperoni and mozzarella. And we did two dessert versions, one with cream cheese and this lovely blueberry jam from the Grizzly Bear Canning Company. It is really good. That was super delicious. And we just dusted that with some powdered sugar to give, oh, here, I still got it here. Uh, just, you know, to make it a little more chefy when you present it. And uh, some of our viewers suggested that this could be served with ice cream. We think that would make a lovely plated dessert and super easy. And then the last one that we made, we put peanut butter, raspberry preserves, and chocolate chips. And this is a supremely delicious combination. Mm -hmm. And this is really, really super yummy. Mmm. Yeah, these are definitely good and supremely worth doing. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, and non-binary guests. 
those. That's the KQ version of a mini waffle iron panini style sandwich. And we love cutting them up in little bite sized pieces because it's fun to eat. And they also make great appetizers that way rather than serving a whole sandwich. So if people at your house want something fun to try, this is great. You could get your whole family involved and everyone can put whatever they want on the inside of theirs. And then you can put it in the waffle iron and everyone can have their own customized panini. It's super easy to do and lots and lots of fun. So if you try this, be sure to let us know what fillings you used and how it turned out because we're always experimenting and this probably won't be the last time we'll make these. We'll, oh, no. <laughs> we're going to probably make more videos as soon as we come up with more combinations of flavors because this is a super easy way to create really fun and yummy food and it doesn't take very long. So there you have it. Okay. We're just about to the end of our time frame. In fact, we've run over. So thank you for hanging out with us. Those of you who've stayed longer than the original hour we planned to run. We just keep on going as long as we've got something interesting to show you. So, we're delicious. yeah, these are yummy. We're going to go pig out on the rest of these. So, okay, ladies and gentlemen, we really appreciate you joining us this afternoon. Thank you so much. I'm Mitch. This is my partner, Philip. Hello. We're KQ here in San Francisco, California, where it's very, very, very smoky outside from the wildfire still. Oh, at least it isn't red. No, the, on Wednesday, oh it was God. like dark orange the like sky. Armageddon. Yeah, it, it looked like we were in an episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. You know, everything outside was weird and orange and dark. And even the street lights were on yeah. everywhere. We had all to have, day long. All day long. We had to have all the lights it in the house dark on. Dark at noon. The good news is that even though the air is terrible, we're not actually super close. So our house is safe so far. And hopefully it stays that way. We hope you guys are all safe where you are. And thanks for joining us this afternoon. So from KQ in San Francisco, we thank you for being with us. We really appreciate your time today and joining us in the live stream. And we hope you give these lovely... Waffle iron panini style sandwiches a try. As you've seen, it's super easy and it's super fun. Okay, so we'll see you in the next live stream. Bye. We'll have a new episode next week. So be sure and check that out. And thanks again for joining us. If you missed any of the information during this episode because you came late, you can check this out on the replay in a couple of hours. So thanks very much for joining us. We really appreciate it. We hope you all have a great day. Okay, thanks again. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>